Now, does this also infringe upon Adidas' trademark? I'm Andre Menken, the founder of Trademark Factory. And in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts about yet another trademarking screw-up. This time around, it's Adidas losing their bid to trademark their three stripes in a U. So let me start by reading from the article, and you can always find the link in the description below. Adidas loses EU bid to extend three-stripe trademark. So Adidas has failed in an attempt to broaden trademark protection for its three-stripe symbol in the European Union as rivals seek to muscle into the market for striped shoes and clothing. Adidas had tried to establish a wider trademark for three parallel equidistant stripes of equal width applied to the product in whichever direction. That's quite some description of a trademark. Let me read it again. Three parallel equidistant stripes of equal width applied to the product in whichever direction. Sexy. The German sporting goods company has trademark protection for its slanted three-stripe logo. The verdict does not affect our ability to use and protect the three stripes, a spokeswoman said. The sporting goods industry has been a rise in trademark and patent disputes as the biggest players try to differentiate their products and justify premium pricing. Again, let me read this one more time. There's a massive lesson here. The sporting goods industry has seen a rise in trademark and patent disputes as the biggest players try to differentiate their products and justify premium pricing. Right? Unless you can differentiate your products from similar products of everyone else, how do you justify the pricing? You don't. And the way to justify that, the way to differentiate yourself, the way to get yourself noticed, the way to stand out from the marketplace is to have a trademark, is to have something unique, is to have a brand that people can recognize. That's why every single successful business got a trademark. I've been saying this over and over again, and this is another, another uh, validation of that. So let's keep reading. High profile cases have included Adidas clashing with Skechers USA and Nike taking on Puma. Wednesday's ruling could erode the value of the Adidas brand, currently worth $14.3 billion, according to David Hay, chief executive of consultancy brand finance. The name is more important, but the recognizable three stripes are also a major contributor to recognition, he said. Very true. So a brand is not just the name, it's not just the logo, it's not this one thing or the other, the other thing. It's a combination of brand elements that you should look into for your business and decide, well, what do I want to protect? Do I want to protect the company name? Do I want to protect the name of my product? Do I want to protect the name of my service? Do I want to protect the names of my features? Do I want to protect my logo, do I want to protect my tagline? If I have several taglines, if I have several, all of that is part of the strategy. A big chunk of that, obviously uh, you're constrained by your budget, but also what you need to understand is that a brand is just not one thing. It's a collection of multiple elements. So for Adidas, it's the name, it's the three stripes in different combinations, so all, all of those things. All right, so let's keep going. The General Court of the European Union said it had upheld a 2016 decision of the European Intellectual Property Office to annul a previous acceptance of the trademark, which Adidas registered in 2014 for clothing, footwear, and headgear. That trademark was challenged by Belgium's shoe brand in Europe after a decade-long dispute with Adidas. The same EU court has rendered shoe branding's own two-stripe trademark invalid last year, saying the stripes were too similar to those of Adidas. So Adidas had a trademark, uh, then 
uh, when shoe branding tried to trademark their two stripes, they were said no because there's an Adidas trademark. So they went after Adidas and now the court has killed Adidas's trademark. Shoe branding bought Patrick, which was founded in 1892 and says it is the oldest sports brand in Europe in 2008. Patrick features two stripes on its shoes and clothing, although they slope in the opposite direction to those of on Adidas shoes. Adidas needed to show that the three parallel stripes, regardless of direction on the product, had acquired a distinctive character throughout the EU based on its use so that consumers inherently knew a product was from Adidas and could distinguish it from products of another company. The court said the mark was not a pattern, but an ordinary figurative mark, and it was not relevant to take into account specific uses involving colors. Adidas, which can still appeal to the European Court of Justice, said in a statement the ruling did not impact other protected uses of the trademark in Europe. Whilst we are disappointed with the decision, we are further evaluating it and are welcoming the useful guidance that the court will give us for protecting our three-stripe mark Apply to our products in whichever direction in the future. The court said Adidas has provided evidence related to the mark's use in the five EU countries, but not throughout the block. Okay, so you can finish reading the article yourself. Um, I just want to share a few of my comments. First of all, is this one of those cases when Adidas, when given an inch, is now trying to take a mile? Maybe, right? They got their protection for the three stripes uh, in different combinations, more limited than uh, not. And now they're trying to say, you know what? That's not enough. We want equidistant equal with lines, no matter what, no matter where, no matter what they're facing, no matter the color, uh, no matter what their width is, uh, we just want the lines. Is there anything wrong with them wanting it? No, right? They're a huge company with a huge brand. They say there's a lot of people who recognize the three lines uh, and we want to take a chance at getting that uh, part of our brand into an asset that we can uh, build up on, that we can monetize, that we can stop others from copying. Uh, and again, there's nothing wrong with them wanting to do that. The second question is, is it wrong uh, for uh, the court to have said, you know what, I think we're going too far with this. Maybe not, because again, there is a, there's, there has to be a line between this is still a brand and uh, these are just freaking lines. I mean, if you can own three lines, then what? What about two lines? What about four lines? What about lines with slightly different distance between the lines? Where does it stop being Adidas's brand and just begin into a simple geometry? And uh, I think the, the court saw the danger in that because really you can expand that to the, to the degree than pretty much anything, anything uh, that has some semblance of lines in it would become owned by Adidas and that's not right. So we'll see where this is gonna go. I think, I think really what contributed to that decision uh, also is the practice of enforcement that Adidas is well known for. They go after pretty much anybody who has parallel lines on their shoes or on their clothing, on sport, sports apparel. And uh, sometimes, in my opinion, they go way overboard with that. Uh, again, is there anything wrong with them trying to uh, defend their brand in situations when there is possible confusion? No, I think they're doing the right thing. That's how they build a brand that's worth $14.3 billion. But uh, by sometimes initiating disputes that, that are really about nothing that could ever cause any confusion, uh, that makes pretty much every uh, judge or every court more hesitant to give it to Adidas because they know that if Adidas owned this, then we would have even more disputes 
uh, around something that may not necessarily be Adidas's brand. So we'll see where this goes. Uh, as the article says, they can appeal. They sure have the funds to do that. They might give it a try. Uh, and uh, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. And uh, we'll see uh, what their efforts are going to be like. But really, there's this continuing saga of several brands like the Red Souls of Louboutin. We always see, you know, wins in one country, loses in the other country. Adidas is trying to protect the three stripes. So there's, there's, there's this interesting dynamic around some brands and we're going to sure and we're sure going to follow it and we're going to see what happens out of this. Now, if you found this video interesting, subscribe now, get notified whenever the next one goes live and I'll see you in the next video, right?